You're watching Telecom TV from ONS North America 2018 in Los Angeles. And I'm joined now by Phil Robb of the Linux Foundation. Phil, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. Um, when we look at um, the evolving nature of, of, of telecoms, and there's, there's a greater influence in open network and open source, what's the role of the, the Linux Foundation? How, how is the Linux Foundation important to telecoms? Well, we started this about five years ago, um, actually in March of 2013 with uh, the Open Daylight Project. Uh, and at that time, I was actually with the Linux Foundation and helped to launch that project. And it was really the first time many of the vendors in the networking world had come together to collaborate, right, to build, a, uh, to build an open source project. We've been doing this now for five years, and we've come to the recognition that, particularly with the Linux Foundation, when an industry needs to pivot uh, and do that with software, it's recognized that doing it with open source is much more quick, much faster, um, as well as uh, much more cost efficient to do it as a collective of companies within an industry. Then they use that foundation that is already by definition interoperable because it's the same, and then they can all use that same foundation to actually build their individual products uh, from where they can differentiate for their specific customers. So with that, with that recognition, then bringing all of these companies together, many of them have never worked together before in this way. They, you know, you might have partner relationships under NDA and a set of strict legal requirements for how two companies come together, but open source is much more of a social construct, right? And so allowing these companies to come together, showing them what the best practices are so there is a level playing field for everybody to get their job done and their work done, uh, that's what the Linux Foundation does. So that neutral place where organizations can come together to work together to pivot an industry technology when necessary. And as we see in the telecommunications industry and networking industry with software-defined networking first, then network function virtualization, now it's really all about those are building blocks ultimately to 5G, right? And so now we're seeing more aspects of 5G uh, componentry starting to materialize like artificial intelligence, like how are exactly are we going to do this edge computing thing? Now that's now the phase that we're on, now that we've begun with the fundamentals of things like software-defined networking and network function virtualization. So we continue to see this progression of needs, um, again, all with the foundation of significant software that needs to be built. And again, doing that collaboratively gets everybody to the end solution much more quickly than they would have gone doing it separately. So in, in this process, um, there are a number of specific project groups and, and, and projects that are of relevance to uh, telcos. What are, the, what are the main ones that, that telcos should be familiar with? Right, so at the Linux Foundation, again, certainly we have an, a, a, the fundamental SDN project, which is Open Daylight. Uh, OPNFB is a different kind of project in that it's not really about making a particular execution or a particular binary, but rather it's, it's recognizing a solution space that needs work, which is network function virtualization, and saying, okay, well, we need a virtualized infrastructure manager, so this OpenStack thing looks to be interesting, and we need to be able to push packets at a much more faster rate through these virtualized channels, so we need something like DPDK. So, you know, we also need a controller so that we can route the traffic through these virtual machines or uh, these virtual environments that we're setting up for these applications, so we need some kind of SDN controller. We see that all of those components exist, but each has gaps. Each has things that isn't quite right, and so we want to work in those upstream projects, then integrate those components, and then test them to see if they actually fill the needs of that solution space that we're, 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 we're looking to satisfy. So that's OPNFV, and that was actually the second project that we launched. Um, the FDIO project came shortly behind that, Again, how do we actually build an engine that you can easily um, build uh, things that are at packets or at, at line speed, right? So a packet pushing type of application um, in the most effective manner. So that was the FDIO project that started. And then as we look at the Etsy architecture, ultimately you need to be able to orchestrate all this. So ONAP is the largest of these projects in lines of code because it not only pulls in um, OpenStack as a virtual infrastructure manager. It also supports other cloud spaces such as, um, such as Azure as well as VMware, but it also brings in an SDN controller. Uh, it has an entire uh, data, uh, data uh, analytics engine 
uh, that is based on Hadoop, which is another large open source project, and it has an entire design center for how you actually design uh, what you want your VNFs to look like, how they're going to interact with the rest of your networking gear, what are the policies around those VNFs, where they can be located, how large they should be, um, and that's an entire design center that then feeds into the rest of ONAP. So it's a very large, again, it's, it's soup to nuts, a full orchestration, a full service orchestration platform. Um, and we've watched these grow. Now, like I said, um, being able to do that analytics on the streaming data that you get from those network components, the data, uh, the, the data collection engine within ONAP collects that information, puts it into, again, a, a Hadoop cluster, so you, that you can do analytics on it, but what kind of analytics do you do? Well, Acumos is now a project that is really about being able to build models and share those models in an effective way for doing artificial intelligence as a method for then applying that or um, actually analyzing that, that large amounts of data that we're going to be pulling from these network components. As an example, so we just keep watching the progression of this foundational software get built in open source so that everybody in the industry can leverage it. It, it sounds as if the, the complexity is just growing exponen exponentially. Um, there just, it just seems to be one, one project begets another, begets another because the, the issues and trying to orchestrate, uh, bring all this together. Um, how, how on earth is it all managed? <laughs> it's a good question. And I guess the first thing that you want to think about is if we weren't doing this collectively, then this same progression would be happening independently in every organization separately. Right? The vendors would be creating this, the, 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 the end users, the operators would be putting down requirements to them in, in, in a very fragmented way. And that same problem of complexity, because you're right, it's a lot of software. That same complexity would exist, but it would be multiplied. Um, and then we would have a much larger problem of doing interoperability. Uh, but in managing it, we recognize what those components are and we continue to now build actual better linkages between these open source projects um, so that they are communicating to one another as quickly as possible. Uh, one of the activities that happened just this past weekend, just, as, just before ONS started, was a cross-CI roundtable and we got the lead folks doing the integration testing from OpenStack, from Ansible, from Open Daylight, from ONAP, uh, from OPNFB, all into a room. And we said, okay, so what is the best pipeline we can make? What's the best tooling we can use? Um, and it was truly a fascinating discussion. I have to admit, we've never, we've never had those gentlemen in a room together over two days. And I mean, not only are we talking about things like, let's do as much testing downstream as we possibly can, even at the point when an upstream project is making a small change. Because if that small change is going to break something down the stream, the sooner they know about it, the faster that gets fixed. Because if we have to wait for one project to consume the next, it just takes so much longer. The propagation time is much larger. But for me, the most interesting thing was, again, a bunch of smart tool makers, right? I mean, software developers, in the end, they're tool makers. They're very much like carpenters or masons, right? You, oh, you want to make the right jig, you want to be able to, to get things done quickly. So they're very much tool makers. And several times um, throughout that weekend, somebody would describe, well, yeah, we've created this tool so that we can see this particular aspect of our testing. And invariably, two other groups in the room would go, we've been thinking about doing that, but we haven't had the time yet. Can you share? And so just that, that type of information sharing is what I enjoy. Um, and we saw a lot of that over that activity just with that project set. And that's really where you want to begin the cross-project discussions like that is around testing and integration. It will certainly propagate more. Uh, certainly the developers of Open Daylight, for example, talk frequently with ONAP, but this was more systemic, right? This was an entire set of projects coming together with a very focused goal of creating efficiency among them. Um, and it's off to a really good start. Great, well, Phil, really informative. Thanks very much for, for explaining all this to Telecom TV. Absolutely.